I'm John Rooney. Uh, I'm Peter James. I'm, I'm Bob James. Myself and my two cousins, Pete and Bob James, uh, run Monument Farms. We each, we each run a different section of the business. So I'm currently the president of Monument Farms. I'm in charge of the farm side of the business. Uh, I run the processing and the quality control part. Uh, my, my job here um, is to oversee the distribution and sales. Uh, and my, my grandparents were the, the founders of Monument Farms, and that happened back in 1930. Um, and the, my parents, my father and my aunt, then took over the ownership. So he started selling it to the hospital, and then he saw that that worked pretty well, so he got some more cows and, and um, more land and started selling it to like institutions like Millbrae College. Uh, we've had a 50-year um, relationship with them. Uh, since then, we've just steadily grown little by little. Um, I can remember when we were producing 8,000 pounds of milk a day instead of the 35 or 36,000 pounds that we produce now. Um, and then since then, my brother, my cousin, and myself uh, are the owners of the business. I can't imagine, I can't imagine us doing this without, without the three of us. Monument Farms sits on 2,300 acres in the rural town of Weybridge, Vermont. The farm is generally split into two sections, the section that houses cows and the land used for feed crop production. After birth, calves go into the Monument Farms nursery, an indoor facility especially adapted to care for and support the animals through their infancy. After eight weeks in the nursery, calves go into a group pen where they are encouraged to eat and grow with other young cows, adapting for future barn life. Um, so these animals are in here for eight weeks. Once they graduate from here, they go into another barn that puts them into an environment where they're in a group situation. More than four or five animals, they're in a, a 25 group situation. Um, and they're also getting a, a total mixed ration rather than some hay, some grain, and some liquid. They're now getting a, a mixture of corn silage, haylage, grains, um, and they're also competing for it in that group situation. Of the 2,300 acres, 18 are planted with feed crops such as corn, grasses for hay, and alfalfa. Um, it has uh, haylage, fermented chopped haylage, corn silage, it has purchased concentrates, uh, whether it be a uh, mix or an uh, energy mix, and it has dry hay for, for fiber. Monument Farms has some serious demands to feed all of their cows, each of which consumes 100 pounds of food and produces 75 pounds of waste every day. Each cow's feed is mixed individually using a large machine, which takes many variables into account, including how long the cow milks and its body temperature. Now, cows are kind of uh, an animal of, of habit, so they, they kind of come in. We'll, you'll see, um, you will attach the, the milker manually, but it, once it senses uh, no milk flow like this one right here, they take the stuff off. So the theory behind that is that it gets milk the same all the time. Monument Farms takes pride in reducing their impact on the environment through a process known as cow power. Through a digester, they convert manure into methane, which in turn is used to power the generators, producing 110 kilowatts per hour for use throughout the farm. I'm John Rooney. Uh, I run the processing and the quality control part. From before sunrise to sunset, John Rooney manages the Monument Farms processing plant ensuring that the dairy produces high-quality milk goods. Monument Farms milks around 450 cows every day, all week. 
This milking produces about 4,000 gallons, or about 35,000 pounds of raw milk every day, which after being taken from the cows is trucked over to the processing plant every Saturday morning. The first step of the process is separation. The raw milk is pumped into a separator, a huge machine that spins at over 6,000 RPMs, that divides the skim milk and the cream. Skim milk is sent to the outside, while the heavier cream stays in the middle. Cream is often used in chocolates and other fancy products, and is combined with skim milk in different proportions to make 2%, 1%, and whole milk. Whole milk contains about 3.5% milk fat. The milk is then sent over to the filler, where bottles are filled and labeled. In total, Monument Farms sells 37 different products. They also bottle milk for other local businesses and put their labels on the bottles. Unlike many larger dairy distributors, Monument Farms milk tends to stay level priced as they produce their own raw milk and base their sale price directly on the cost of production. Uh, my, my job here um, is to oversee the distribution and sales and oversee our, um, the routes, the, the truck deliveries and the, and the drivers. And inventorying our cooler or walk-in cooler so we have all the products the drivers need for the next day. That would be probably the bulk of it. Um, an, ideal, an ideal day would be uh, a day where, where someone says, go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> but, but typically, um, day, a daily task for myself would be uh, calling orders in for these special products that we order through other dairies, um, knowing that all the trucks went out, made the deliveries, came back, and there was no problems. The, the drivers um, didn't have any truck issues that day. Um, that would be a big bulk of what would make for a smooth day. As far as the people under myself would be the delivery people, um, just managing their route so they can get around to all of their accounts on a timely fashion. Once the milk has been packaged, it is ready to be shipped out and delivered to various locations, one of which is MUHS itself. Trucks filled with milk crates leave the dairy between 2.30 and 6.30 a.m. and cover eight routes ranging from Addison County to northern Vermont. Mm. Uh, we have maybe 300 customers, um, a one-on-one -on -one contact with these customers. Um, from where we're located here in near Middlebury, we go um, south in Vermont, well, we're in Vermont only, we go south um, maybe 20 miles and maybe 50 miles, we go up to the Canadian border and just on the western side of Vermont. We try to be um, good neighbors um, and we try to to be good community members um, and, and I'm proud of, of our contributions, our participation in whatever goes, whether it be the high school, the college, the local schools, or just community-based things. Um, something that, that small businesses need to do to make a good community. Well, we, we have a good reputation and that's a lot of the battle. I think a, a number of us in the, in the family and even some of the local employees are, are, are involved somehow in, in the local communities. And I think there's a, a good respect for Monument Farms from the locals, local folks, and, and also um, people in the last few years are really, um, it's important to them to know where their food is coming from. And I think they feel very confident when they buy products from us.